to my live video of the month of March. And I would like uh, to know if the audio is good. Can you guys tell me if the audio is good? That's pretty much uh, what I need to know to start this video. So we can talk about DD13 and DD15 engines. And that is the topic that you guys choose for this live, live video. Um, so we can, uh, we need to know that. So in order to start this live video, can you guys tell me? Can you guys tell me if uh, the audio is good? That would be great. All right, I think it's good. I hear myself. Oh, <laughs> uh, let's see. 10 of 10. Okay. A couple of questions already. I would like to know more about the sensors and the DEF system on these engines as well. Yeah, I may, I may mention something about it because uh, DD15s and DD13s are very similar engines. Uh, there is no much difference between them when it comes to functionality. The difference is uh, on components and stuff like that. Um, but uh, it is not just a basic difference. There is more about these engines. Even though ND13s and ND15s are made by Mercedes-Benz, Detroit Diesel, um, and they are based on the same platform, they're exactly not the same. And that is what we're gonna discuss in this video. So I think uh, if if my audio is good, I, I already have a couple of uh, viewers um, watching these, uh, uh, streaming so if that is okay we can start with the live video talking about the editor thing and d15 right away and after i'm done talking about it i will answer all the questions and uh if you guys are okay with it so yes uh so with no questions no more questions not too many questions so i would say then um let's start with the difference on the a DD13 and DD15. Uh, my DD13 runs uh, 100 RPMs higher than the DD15. Well, that is just basic basic programming. The old engines, all these engines are are based to work on 600 RPMs, and depending on how the CPC in this case is programmed, that's how the uh, a, the uh, idle is going to run. All right, let's do this. Let me, I have a whiteboard here. So because I want to explain this pretty well so you guys can understand a little better. So let's go a little farther away. I think that's better. So uh, we're going to be talking about DD13 and DD15. Uh, oh, I think that's too high. <laughs> okay, a little lower. Okay, right here, yeah. D D thirteen and D B D D fifteen. Still a little higher. Oh no, that's fine. Okay. See, uh, the difference of these engines are more than just the size of the engine and the power of the engine. And nowadays with the power, uh, it's a little different because I just read a newsletter from Detroit and they are saying then the, uh, then the DD13 can be powered up to 500 horsepower. That's a lot of power for a small engine. But uh, let's, let's work on that. Uh, Let's grab this. All right. So the DD13 engine, there is many different uh, uh, generations of these two engines. Um, 
there is for the DD13, there is uh, EPA10, GSG14, GSG17, and GSG21. So these are all the different generations for the DD13 engine. And for the DD15 engine, we have one extra generation because it was the freeze uh, a engine built. So we have EPA10, I mean, 07, sorry. Uh, we have EPA10, EP, I uh, know, this is GSG14, uh, GSG17, and GSG21. And then there is a the new one that is going to come soon. I think that was, will, will be GSG24 or 25. That will be the newest addition to these uh, generations of DD15s and DD13 engines. Um, eh, so the EPA 10 was the addition of the SCR system for both generation, the SCR, the SCR and both generations. The GSG 14, oh no, this is, sorry, this is wrong. So on the EPA, EPA 7 was the DPF, and here was the SCR. For the GSG 17, uh, um, was no much different than that, but it was an update on the system, on the SCR system. So we have electronic uh, uh, DF pump, like EDAF. Pump. So it's electronic control. In this one, the first generation was air control. It was a very, very basic uh, system. So the GSG-14 added the electronic uh, DF pump, which is the smaller DF uh, pump, and is more accurate, easy to repair, and it, it lasts a little longer and less expensive because this, the air system, the air DF pump, was divided in three different components, and these components, in, in combination of these components, uh, the total was around $2,000. And this one is divided in two components. And combination of the two components is around like $1,500. $1, so you're saving $500 just on that. And that is, and also it's lighter weight. We're saving weight on this one. Uh, and say we have the e, uh, DEF2 pump. Um, for the GSG17, which is the, uh, we can say the generation then added more regulations for uh, DD15s. We added the suit sensor. And here, the generation got the suit sensor. The suit sensor. If you, you don't know what the suit sensor is, basically, the suit sensor is what tells how bad the contamination. Uh, is when the gases are leaving the SCR box. So the SCR box is traveling in one direction, and if at the end, after the, the whole after treatment, uh, the gases have contamination, the suit sensor is going to detect that. And that is going to set a different fault code telling you then there is a problem with that. Now, the GSG21, then GSG21 isn't much different than the 17th, but it has a very limited uh, a tolerance, which means they are very, it needs to have a very low emissions. So this is ultra low emissions, the ultra low emissions for both, uh, ultra low. So 
uh, the DD13 and DD15 engines, when it comes to emissions, are exactly the same. They don't vary. There's no much variation between that. And uh, that's something that you guys got to understand. If you have a DD13 and you have a DD15 engine, they basically work kind of the same. They don't have much different when it comes to emissions. The difference is then some of the components are going to be located in a different areas, depending on the chassis, depending on the application, depending on the component, because DD13 and the D15, the D13 is a smaller engine, and this engine can be on a smaller vehicles, M2s, and short nose carriers. And DD15 can be in larger vehicles, like full-size sleepers, uh, severe duty trucks, and so many other trucks that are larger in size. So the, the, the components variation is going to be depending on the vehicle, depending on the application of the vehicle, but the functionality of these components is going to be the same. So this, one, this is the difference between the emission system uh, between these two engines, and the, and the difference is none. There is no difference between these engines. So if you have a DD13 engine and you have a D15 engine, they all work the same. Uh, they may have different numbers here and there because of the sensors, the length of the sensor, the cables, and everything they vary. Uh, depending on what you have, that's the difference. But it's not going to be much different. Pretty much the same sensors can fit in one to another uh, if the length of the cables or the uh, um, uh, the assembly fits on the component. That would be the difference. But so this this uh, with this uh, we solve the problem. I mean, the, they talk about what is the difference between these these two engines when it comes to emissions. And as I say. The difference is there is no difference when it comes to emissions. So now we're gonna talk about the power of these engines. What is the difference on power on these engines? Oh, this one is bad. Um, yeah, all right. Okay, the difference on power on, between these two engines, we're gonna talk about that. Uh, so, the DD13 engine is a smaller engine, DD15 engine is a bigger engine. Uh, older engines can be uh, around 370, 370 HP. And the newest DD15 engines, then I have seen, then I read about it uh, not too long ago, they can go up to 500 horsepower. I, 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 this is something new for me. I mean, like D13 engines now, 2025 DD15 engines can go up to 500 horsepower, which means then D15, there is not, there is no reason to have a D15 anymore. If you have a 500 horsepower DD13 engine, you don't need a DD15 anymore. So when it comes to power on DD15, I have seen uh, 400 horsepower DD15 all the way to 550. Um, and uh, these right here, 400 horsepower uh, DD15 engines, those are very low uh, fuel consumption engines, fuel efficient engines. They have, you still have the big engine. You don't have the DD13 engine, you have the DD15 with 400 horsepower. They really have a very a low power. They don't have a lot of power but they're really good when it comes to fuel economy. And they are so smooth because the bigger engine is smoother. Um, and 550 horsepower, that's pretty rare to see a D15 engine with 550 horsepower, but there is some here and there. The majority of D15 engines, they are around 500, 470 to 500 horsepower. Now, when it comes to D13s, the majority of D13s are around 430 all the way to 470. Um, that is for the newest. For the oldest, they usually are uh, 370 all the way to 430. So it depending on what year you have, the horsepower that you have on the DD13 engine. Um, now, uh, the torque is going to be kind of the same depending on the application. Remember then the torque of this engine is going to vary on the application for the engine. That is something important. The basic engine torque, on these engines is always going to be uh, 1,650 pounds feet of torque. That would be uh, the, the basic torque on these engines. The same with these.
the same torque with the DD15, but they can vary depending on the application. The application of this engine vary depending on what it's going to be used for. If you want to have a severe duty DD15 engine, you can have up to 2,000 or more torque, uh, foot pound of torque. Um, and the torquing engine, since it's a smaller engine, you won't have that much torque because it's a smaller engine. You may have the power, you may have the horsepower, but you won't have that much torque because it's a smaller engine. So this uh, 1650 torque for the 500 horsepower, that's for the 2025 model. But for these older D15 engines with 370 um, horsepower, they're gonna have like 1200, 1300, uh, pound feet of torque, um, and that is a pretty uh, slow engine. They don't have much torque, to be honest. Uh, but you know, it's something to keep in mind. If you are uh, looking to buy a D13 or D15 engine, uh, you may have uh, you may have uh, the numbers, the good numbers when it comes to horsepower. They they have both of them have good numbers, but when it comes to the torque. That is when it's going to be different because we have a bigger engine. Obviously, we're gonna have more torque on this because we have a bigger crankshaft, uh, more room for more things, and uh, that's that's completely basic. Um, and uh, I will say then the biggest difference between these two engines is on the power. That that's pretty much it. When it comes to torque, not not the horsepower, it is the torque. One engine is going to have more torque than the other, obviously because it's bigger. But also the fuel economy, the 13 is going to have a better fuel economy than the 15 because the 13 is going to be a smaller engine. It's going to consume less fuel overall. And now, another very important topic is the weight of these two engines. The DD15 and the DD13, they're completely different engines, even though they're based on the same platform. They exactly copy of each other, but in a smaller or bigger version. So the average weight or a DD15 engine is going to be around 2,900 pounds for, for a DD15 engine. And for a DD13 is going to be around 2,200 pounds. So it is around like, uh, 700 pounds different. That's an estimate. It's not the exact number. This is based on what I remember, to be honest. Uh, but they're about around this weight. Um, uh, it is just 700 pounds, you know, we can say, of uh, difference. But that means a lot when you are carrying weight. When you have a lot, uh, whenever you are, you know, over the limit, those pounds, extra pounds, can you know declare extra weight on the front axle, and all of you know that, especially front axle. And uh, you may have the fifth wheel moving here and there. You can fix the load and everything. But if the truck is too heavy in the front, it's going to be very very hard to get that weight away from the front axle. So uh, that is one of the biggest benefits of having a DD13 engine. A DD13 engine is a lighter engine. And also, the newest engine is capable to have 500 horsepower. That is kind of killing the DD15 engine at some point, to be honest, because you are competing. D in Detroit is competing against its own engine, bigger, bigger engine. The DD15 engine is a big, the biggest engine DD15, uh, uh, Detroit has. And still, the DD13 is capable to go to the horsepower and have a decent torque and having a lower weight. That is actually pretty nice, to be honest, because you want to have fuel economy, you want to have low weight in the front axle, you want to have uh, a, a small engine, uh, better fuel economy. Uh, well, I just say fuel economy. So smaller engine, more room in the, in the, to work on it, depending on the chassis you have also. And uh, you want to have the same amount of power. So uh, it is, uh, uh, I, I, I kind of don't see the difference nowadays. If they're, if they're claiming them for 2025, they want to have 500 horsepower DD15 engines. Um, 
to be honest, I was just talking to one of my customers and uh, uh, she is planning to buy a 2025 uh, Cascadia with a DD13 engine. And that DD13 engine has 470 horsepower. That's a lot of power for a DD13 engine. That sounds like DD15 engine. So, I mean, that, that, that's the new generation of engine we're gonna have for 2025. DD13 engines, full NOx and full sleeper cascadias with 500 horsepower or 475 or 450, depending on the application, depending on the rate, depending on who orders, depending on the tune, depending on whatever you want uh, to call it. So, uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I can see the DD13 is going to be the next the next popular engine as DD13 was because I mean DD15 was because DD15 is a bigger engine, but if DD13 engine has the same I mean the the benefit of uh, being powerful as DD15, but having a lower weight, of course, is going to be the best engine to have. So uh, these are the major difference when it comes to specs. Basically, the basic specs on the weight, torque, horsepower. Uh, now, when it comes to mechanical, that's another different thing. When it comes to mechanical between these two engines, um, there are differences between these two engines when it comes to mechanical components. Let me see if I have something to clean. Oh, yeah, right here. I need to clean the, the board because it got all green, so I got the little thing here. So, all right, let's clean this. Yeah, this marker got a kind of like bad. Um, I think it's getting worse. <laughs> um, okay. All right, that's a little better, it looks better was really bad sorry about the all right okay so uh now uh mechanical i was i was talking about mechanical okay what is the difference between the mechanical components of this uh they're kind of similar when it comes to mechanical uh by that by, by my experience the physical components are not the same. The cam housing is not the same. Crankshaft is not the same. Pistons are not the same. Um, uh, uh, we'll see, uh, connecting rods are not the same, but there are other components that are the same. Oil cooler is the same. Fuel pump is the same. Fuel module is the same. Uh, uh, harnesses are not the same. So uh, when it comes to mechanical components, there are different components that are sharing between these. So uh, oil coolers, injectors, uh, fuel pumps, air compressors, some of them are the same. So some of them are swappable. So if you have a DD15, <coughs> you have a DD13 a DD engine, you can swap the components. I personally have installed DD15 injectors on DD13s and DD13 injectors and DD15s, and they all work pretty well. So um, uh, they, they work. So they uh, physically, they're the same, but the part number in all the aspect when it comes to the internal components might, might not be the same, but it works. So it does the job. So we have different mechanical components, so like pistons, like pistons are different. Uh, uh, the crank is different. And uh, um, also the cam housing, the cam shaft is different. So these are the major difference when it comes to engine, the size of the engine. So because we have a 12.8 liter engine, so we wanna have a smaller engine. That's the reason why it's called DD13 because it's closer to the 13 displacement. So we have a... a at 12.8, when it comes to DD15, we have a 14.8 liter. So it, it, it is way bigger 
than uh, the digital thing, of course. So you're gonna have bigger pistons. And crankshaft and camshaft. So you want to have bigger everything when it comes to the different mechanical components. So that's the reason why you are able to have more torque on the 50 engines because you have bigger everything. So you have a larger crankshaft. Uh, the crankshaft can be uh, you can you, you can swap the crankshaft for a for a a bigger torque D15 engine, and you want to have more power. When it comes to the tortines, you are limited. Um, mostly, you can tune the computer to have more horsepower. That's possible. But you cannot tune the computer to have more torque. Because the torque is basically the mechanical components, the mechanical uh, uh, configuration of the engine. So the bigger the engine, the more torque you can have. Um, uh, that, uh, the DF15 is a larger engine, as I said before, so it has room to have bigger crankshaft when it comes to the rotation. So the rotation of the engine can be larger, so which means the connecting rod is going to have more travel to do uh, more torque. And when it comes to the DF15, you want to have a smaller one, so you're going to have less travel to do uh, torque. That, that, that's because the engine is smaller. It's not, it's not because... Uh, 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 the the pro the programming the parameters no it's just because the engine mechanically is a smaller engine so you are you want to have less torque even though then you have the same horsepower you don't have the same torque uh, and that is one of the major mechanical difference of the D thing and the fifteen engine um, the D thing engine usually is going to have less power going uphill. It's normal. You have a smaller engine, so uh, you won't have the power than D15 have, but you won't also uh, be going uphill 15, 10 miles per hour. You wanna be probably going uphill probably 25, 20, 25 miles per hour, depending. Um, and D15s can go 35, maybe 40, depending on the loads too. And depending who's driving it to, because uh, sometimes you need to know how to drive the trucks in order to get the maximum amount of power going uphill. So, uh, and and that will be one of the mechanical aspects when it comes to these two engines. I think uh, when it comes to power, of course, the D15 is going to be the best when it comes to power. When it comes to fuel efficiency, the thing is going to be the best. If you don't mind having an engine, then you need to baby or going uphill. And whenever you're taking off, whenever you are, you know, going gear by gear, ga gaining a speed. And if you don't mind going slow at that time, the other thing is the way to go. But if you want a little more power, a little more torque going uphill, a little more, uh, a, a, uh, getting to uh, get into the speed faster, D15 will be the best because you want to have that extra power than the D15 is going to give you because of the larger engine. Um, there are other aspects that are going to be different between these two engines, and that will be the computer tune. The tune of the computer is different. The tune. Why this computer tune is different because we have a larger engine. We have a different fuel map than this one. The fuel map on this one is based on a 13, uh, in a, well, 12.8 liter engine. So it's a smaller section than the fuel has to compensate. So the cylinder is going to be here and here is the injector. So the amount of fuel then the injector has to uh, release for the piston to create power um, is going to be less on the D13 than the D15 because the D15, we have a larger engine, which means that it needs more fuel to operate. And the D13, of course, smaller engine, we have less. So that is going to be computer, it's going to be controlled by the ECU. The ECU is going to control the timing is going to control the fuel amount is going to control the ratio air fuel ratio on the internal combustion engine 
So that way you can have the power then you are advised to have. So if you have 500 HP, the tune, the, uh, the tune of the computer has to be five, for 500 horsepower. So the tune for 500 HP. So, and if you have a digital thing engine, then the tune is for 400 horsepower, then the computer is going to do the work of injecting less fuel and following the process on how to compensate the air and the fuel ratio um, so that way you can have an, an harmonic balance when it, when it comes to engine functionality. The engine can work fine with no problems, no shaking, no weird noises and everything. The computer is the one that has to compensate. And the same thing with the, for the D15 engine. If you have a 500 horsepower D15 engine, the ECU is the one that controls that. The ECU is the one that controls the horsepower mostly. And uh, that is going to tell how much fuel you are going to consume. Um, uh, now, uh, if the tune of this engine uh, for some reason, uh, it's not the right one. You are not going to have power on your or your engine, or it's going to be over power, and that can damage the mechanical components of the engine. And that's what's happening nowadays in this generation of DPF and deletes and all that. The the situation that is happening is in a lot of tuners now they call tuners because they don't want to call they don't want to be called people in the lead uh systems they want to be called tuners now uh, uh they come and replace the original tune of the engine and replace it for a generic tune that they have because they don't do the tune someone else do the tunes and then just copy and paste and when they, whenever they copy the pay, uh, copy and paste the tune, they don't even care about what is the engine ready for. Like for example, like we have a DD15 engine, then can be rated as maximum 500 horsepower, no more than that. And the reason why the the manufacturer rates the engine to 500 horsepower is because if you go beyond 500 horsepower, you might present damage internal in uh, to internals of the engine. So uh, pistons, cylinder head, uh, connecting rod, crankshaft can suffer damage if you go beyond the 500 uh, horsepower mark. The same thing with the D15. If the D15 is just rated as maximum of uh, 400 horsepower and you do 500 horsepower on this engine, <clears throat> it's possible that you are going to damage this engine. So that is, <coughs> sorry, that's what are happening with these newer uh, tuners. They just copy and paste the tune, they don't care the engine is gonna work fine for a couple months, for a year or something, but eventually the engine is going to start suffering problems. And then you're gonna have damaged uh, cylinder heads, broken cylinder bolts. You're gonna have uh, damaged pistons, damaged connecting rods, damaged connecting rod bearings because the pressure that you are applying to the piston and the connecting rod, the bearing cannot resist. Uh, and so many other things. And, and it has happened. Sometimes the trucks are fine, and all of the sudden the connecting rod bearing just uh, goes bad for no reason. But it's just because the connecting rod is putting so much pressure on the bearing, and the bearing is not ready for that much power. And that's something that a lot of people doesn't get when it comes to mechanical things. They think just because the engine has the power can handle the power. No, the engine has a specific amount of power the engine can be pushed to. But if you accept, uh, you, you you push that limit beyond the limit that is already stated, that is going to damage your engine. And it has, has been with uh, Cummins, Detroit, Packard, with all the engines just because of the tune. So that's the reason why it's very important to have a nice tune. So if you, if you don't have the tune, uh, the right tune for your engine, that is going to destroy uh, multiple engines and uh well i just be careful with that don't don't just do any tune to your engine because that will be bad for your engine anyway uh but uh going back to the d15 and d13 engine uh, uh yeah we have we have the two engines and as i said before uh torque is going to be the difference and the horsepower is going to be 
uh, basically the computer telling the injector how much fuel you have to apply to the system, and that is going to create the power and the torque is going to be the basically the mechanical aspect, how big the crankshaft is and how powerful the every rotation of the engine uh, is. Every time the piston or goes on stroke and the uh, uh, going down and stroke, that is going to create the torque. Uh, so uh, that's pretty basic. So I think we're gonna move on. And what engine we should buy? That would be the good question. What engine? You should buy if you are a trucker. If you want to buy a different truck, or if you want to experience something different, if you don't want to have a DD15, you will want something different. Do you need a DD13 engine? That would be the good question, right? Uh, why do you need a DD13 engine? Uh, now we know the basics of the engine, and, and, and even though the DD13 and D15 engine are made by Mercedes-Benz, Detroit diesel, uh, even though they're exactly the same, basically, right? They're not, there are many differences. So you have many advantage on the D15 engine because D15, I mean, D13 engine, because the D13 engine, you can have this engine on a smaller vehicles. So if you have a D13 engine, you can have an M2 or a Cascadia. And when it comes to D15, it's going to be a Cascadia or Coronado or Coronado. So you wanna have Cascadia or Coronado. So these are the biggest vehicles. So you wanna have the full sleeper. And the low nose, and the long nose truck. So you, for D15 engine, you need the long, long, long nose because it is a bigger engine. For D13, uh, you can have day caps, full sleeper, and full sleeper with short nose. So there are many different combinations you can get with the 13 engines when it comes to vehicles, when it comes to chassis. Uh, because you have a smaller engine, you can get long nose Cascadias, just like the D15. You can get short nose Cascadias in the ACAP configuration. You can have a short nose, long, uh, long nose Cascadias. Full sleeper, middle sleepers, you can get them with full nose, like long nose or short nose, depending on what you want. And uh, in the M2s, they're just short nose. They're the smallest version of the uh, of the truck. So uh, uh, the M2 is going to be good for city work. And the short nose day cap is going to be good for city work as well. But then you have the short nose full sleeper. That is something that is good for long travel. So if you are going all the way to New York or from New York, you come to LA, you know the streets, you know the roads are no large. They're pretty small. They, they, you don't have no room. So having a short nose full of sleeper will help you to be able to go to the city. Now, if you have a D15 engine, you only have a full nose and you can have the day cap too, but only on full nose configuration. You don't have the short nose when it comes to uh, the D15 engines. So um, uh, you uh, only, only uh, the problem is like a, uh, whenever you go to the series, the long nose is going to be a problem whenever you are trying to park, whenever you're going to a very tight area then you need to maneuver here and there to get in. That will be pretty hard to get to it, you know, so that is the reason why sometimes the D13 with short nose will be the best option when it comes to long travel and having the ability to park. But when it comes to me, like a mechanic, having short nose Cascadias is a nightmare. Anything that is an M2 or short nose Cascadia, it is something that we hate because it's pretty small, pretty compact. 
you have no room to work. You know, everything is pretty hidden inside. So half of the ending is visible. The other half of the ending is inside. So to work on these engines it is pretty hard. And even for you, if you are an operator and you want to uh, do something yourself, it's not going to be very easy. It's going to be very challenging if you have a short nose. Uh, mm, sorry. Um, a truck. So that is a bigger problem. And and when it comes to uh, the weight on this engine, depending on the configuration you have, you can do up to 80,000 pounds in both. So that's for full load. So you can have four trailers. Uh, you can have a... Uh, a, a, a 53, a 53 uh, feet uh, trailer, and you can still be using both of them. So when it comes to weight, you don't have no problems either one. And that is what I, I say at the beginning, when it comes to weight, the D13 has a uh, advantage because you have a lower weight in the front axle. So that means then you are able to uh, get a better, uh, a payload when it comes to the overall weight. So 600 pounds in the front axle means a lot, especially when you are close to the limit. I have seen people with KWs, uh, T680, W900, uh, and all those trucks, they are pretty heavy in the front axle, and they, had, they, they, they had always having a hard time trying to adjust the front axle weight. And that is something you don't get when it comes to the D13 engines because you have a smaller engine than weights less than all the engines around it. And um, that is uh, something that uh, is pretty neat to have, I would say, right? So, uh, Peter? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, sí, sí. Uh, okay, uh, that that is uh, that's going to be the major difference when it comes to that. So, but anyway, uh, uh, when it comes to pricing for this engine, D13 and D15 engine, a new engine is kind of the same. There is not much different when it comes to pricing. It's just a couple thousand bucks different, two thousand, three thousand different. When it, if you go to a dealer and buy a brand new engine, a D13 engine or a D15 engine. Not much different. They're still expensive. Both of them are expensive. And when it comes to the truck, if you want to buy a full sleeper D15 engine and you want to buy a full sleeper D13 engine, it's just like ten thousand dollars different, depending. Uh, it's not much different. So that would be uh, anyway something then you don't. Uh, uh, you, it, it, it won't make that much sense to choose one over the other if you're talking about pricing because the pricing is going to be the same. Um, and uh, and that will be pretty much the basis when it comes to the difference between this engine. I can talk more about it when it comes to other mechanical aspects, the size of the engine and the repair, full codes and all that. But that will be very deep. I will say then one of the common problems that both engines have uh, D13 and D15 engines, they're based on the same platform, as I say, DD platform, as they call it. And, uh, uh, and the, they still have the common problems. Uh, DD13, uh, let's see, let's clear this up. Because we, we have the same platform, uh, we have the same problems. So we have the problem here, fuel and coolant problem. The coolant and the fuel, they mix together. So that problem is the same for the fuel and coolant. Same problems, the same thing, same basic common problem they have. Uh, you have all cooler problem. The oil start mixing with the coolant, the same thing for the D13s. The all cooler problem. The all cooler problem. Uh, they both have the same component. Um, fuel injector failure. Fuel injectors, they're just quick working and the engine won't start. They do have the same problem. 
फ्यूल इंजेक्शन Um, they both have the same problem. When it comes to the fuel pump failure, the same fuel pump, you're gonna have the same problem. The fuel pump is not gonna build enough pressure. It's just gonna be the basic problem because they're both using the same platform uh, components. So we have fuel pump problem as well. Now, Another very common too is wiring harnesses. Those are very common in the D15 engine. No matter what year you have, no matter if you have a 2007, a 2008 uh, D15 engine, or you have a 2023 D15 engine, or D13, uh, 2010 D13, or a, DF, or a 2021 D13, they all have wiring problems. So the wiring always goes bad in this engine. Uh, and another basic problem too, then they share oil pump problems. <laughs> the oil pump O-rings, they all go bad. Uh, they are uh, uh, basically the same components. So the O-rings of the oil pump, they dry over the time. They start letting the pressure out. And the suction manifold is plastic for both engines. So it's the same thing. So but the oil pump problem too. And let me let me think about another common problem then we can have on both engines. Uh, mm, let's see, we have fuel, we have oil, we have fuel injection, fuel pump, wiring, uh, uh, oh, uh, cylinder head failure. Cylinder head on both engines go bad. Over 700,000, 800,000 miles, you wanna start hearing a hissing coming from the intake of the exhaust and you do the ball adjustment and eventually uh, uh, you uh, have to do the ball adjustment again because you hear the same hissing sound coming from the engine it's because the cylinder head is bad. And regardless if you have a D15 or D13 engine, it's going to be the same. So the head problem. So, and there is other common problems too, but uh, I will just leave it like this. So we can talk about it all day long if you want. Um, so uh, as you can see, even though the engines are different, they still have problems just like one to each other. So D13, D15, D15, D13, they have the same problems basically. Some of them are going to be different. Now, emission problem, that will probably, I will say that. What are the difference in emission problems? So I, I'm gonna mention that before I finish this video so that way you get the idea on what, based on my experience, based on what I work on, everything I'm, I'm, I'm saying here is based on what I know. And it's just what I see every day on trucks, what I repair, what I go through. So on D15 engines, we have SCR failures. And D13 engines, we have SCR failures too, the SCR, box itself the one box they call it too it goes bad over time letting uh problems like uh, uh low emissions uh, uh d rates uh def inducement and many things like that so the scr is just basically the same component on both and that's talking about emissions it's not talking about engine at all so a uh, nox sensor also was bad. Yeah. The NOx sensor goes bad too. They all sharing the same basic module when it comes to the uh, basic sensor module. So, and the sensor itself is the same too. What changes between these two engines, D13 and D15, is the length of the cable. So if you go to a dealer and you buy the ground sensor, it's not as the sensor is it is the ground just because it doesn't reach where you want it to place it. Um, but in, in, in when it comes to how it works, it works the same. 
but it's just too short or too long, depending. So uh, they felt over the time is uh, is a very common problem on DD15, DD13 engines, regardless of what you have. DEF problem, DEF pump problems, they both go bad. When what happened with DEF pump is like they stop working. Um, usually after 500,000 miles, they go bad. The RPM of the DEF pump has to be around 1,100 RPMs, and the pressure got to be around like uh, 145 psi to compensate the amount of pressure that the injector got to release to reduce the emission when the engine is working as you know on demand uh, and that emission has got to be controlled by the SUR and the, if the amount of pressure is not the right one that means that you won't have the amount of DEF going traveling around uh, uh, the system and that is not going to create the magic of lowering the emission, and that is when you're gonna get a D rate. That is when you're gonna get uh, inducement. That's when you're gonna get the red light on. So the DEF pump is the major factor for that, and it's one of the major reasons why you have a D rate on DD13 or DD15 engines. Uh, but how you know when your DEF pump is bad? Well, you have to check it. You have to go to the DDL software, see all the aspects. Uh, RPM, uh, uh, you like you guys have seen this live video, so I'm giving you information. So RPM got to be 1,100 something each around that, so 1,200 maximum, 1,300. That's the limit. If it goes over 1,400, uh, 1,300, like 350, 400, 1,500, that pump is bad. You need to replace that DF pump. And if the RPM is 1,100 uh, RPMs, a, a really good RPM, but you have uh, 130, uh, 120 PSI, then you have also a bad DF pump. And that can be caused for many different reasons. A lot of people do replace the DF pump filter, but it, it, it might work. I, 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 won't, I, I wouldn't deny that that will solve the problem, but still the DF pump is an electronic component, a mechanical electronic component then wears out over the time. So it's just better to replace the whole thing anyway. I mean, you don't want your truck to degrade whenever you are somewhere in Michigan, you know, somewhere in uh, Texas. Uh, you don't want, especially, you know, Whenever you, I know you guys, then whenever you are over the road, your truck derates and you look for the nearest repair shop and their shop says, oh yeah, we can fix your truck. And then you get the truck there and they don't even know what they wanna do. And they, they, they are charging you just because you have the truck there. So, I mean, to prevent that, just put new things. I mean, don't, don't just replace the filter, just put it new because you have 500,000 miles in your truck. Hey, I mean, like uh, it is time to put new things. If it's already failing, just replace it completely. Don't don't just you know like do something here. I know it's pretty expensive sometimes, eight hundred, seven hundred, depending where you buy it for the DF pump. But uh, that's something out of the context. That's had nothing to do with the diff. I mean, with the common problems with the D fourteen and D fifteen and D uh, thirteen engines. So we have ACR Nox uh, and uh, a. Uh, the pump now uh doc they have the same problem doc they doc is part of the scr box but not the same component as the scr box so uh the doc and the scr box or the one box they are built together the DOC is the freeze component then the emission encounters when it's released, it's being released from the engine. So when the pressure of the exhaust is traveling all the way, uh, leaving the turbo goes to the DOC. And the DOC um, is the one in charge to increase uh, the temperature so the region can happen. Um, if the DOC is not 
increasing the temperature as the ECU is requesting, you're going to have the rates. You're going to have shutdown. You're going to have many other things too. So uh, they both fail. And uh, how you want to know when this component fails? Computer. You have to see yourself whenever you are working, whenever you know that there is a problem. You have to a region be there 100% or at least be uh, the closest to that problem you're working on until you see where is the flotation or the problem uh, when it comes to the DUC failure. Why the DUC failing? So that will be uh, something to uh, pay attention when it comes to this. Um, the CDOC, we also have DPF problems. That's pretty basic. The DPF, that's something that is replaceable. So uh, the DPF is something that you need to replace every some miles, every 2,000, uh, 200,000, 300,000, depending on if you want to replace it, you want to clean it. They all crack. So it's a very known problem already. So I don't need to know, I don't, I don't need to explain more about it and uh well and then we have wiring problem too the ser box has wiring problem too um the wiring goes bad in both either the dd13 or d15 so the wiring goes bad uh, eventually i mean you are exposing the wiring to a lot of heat when the a region or when the truck is on motion so the plastic and all the components you know tend to you know like chaff together and that is what damage the uh, the wiring it's a pretty basic problem when it comes to uh the 15 the problem is where is the problem where where is the problem you need to find it you need to go look around and see what is the problem especially with wiring with the wiring you need to understand what is causing the problem. That is something that will be hard when it comes to understanding the failure of your uh, system. But anyway, uh, I think, uh, I don't know, I think I I, I explained uh, everything a little more, or maybe, I mean, you guys tell me if I did a little more or less, whatever. I kind of explain the difference between D13 and D15 engines almost for one hour straight and uh uh i mean it, it, it there is a lot we can talk about these two engines mm -hmm. but uh remember then uh if you want a d13 engine um it is not because you want to have power you want a d13 engine because you have you want to have less weight and you want to have a better fuel economy and if you want a DD13 engine, you want to sacrifice the weight and you want to have more power, but also you want to sacrifice fuel economy, you will have a more or less uh, a, uh, efficient vehicle. So that is going to depend on you. If you really want a truck that has a power or you have fuel economy, but as I said before, a, 2025 Cascadias with D13 engines are equipped with D13 engines with 400, 500 horsepower. That is plenty of power. Of course, you don't have the torque, but you have the power. So uh, that is that's that's pretty impressive to me because you have a pretty small engine. Uh, and if that is the case, if they are going to be pushing DD13 engines with 500 horsepower, uh, those specifically 500 horsepower are for long haul uh, trucks, only for long hauls. So uh, DD15 is going to go away eventually. It's going to be disappearing liter by liter because DD13 is going to take over DD15, especially for the power, fuel economy, weight savings. And that is going to help a lot, you know, uh, eventually overall, because nowadays uh, trucks are going lighter, are going are going very cheap made, but not because they're cheap. It's just because they're adding more components and more components. Uh, before trucks, you just they used to have the brakes, the clutch, the pedal, uh, the computer, then control the uh, engine, and a bunch of wiring, and that was it. And, this, and the gauges and all that. 
But now you have a module for every single thing. You have a module for the ABS. You have a module for the lights. You have a module for the uh, engine functionality. You have a module for the cabin control. You have a model for the trailer. You have a model for everything. So everything is, uh, I mean, pretty complex. So everything together is raising the weight of the engine, uh, of the vehicle in, in overall. So what manufacturers do, take the weight away somewhere else. So the weight in the front axle is going to be compensated by adding a plastic bumper before bumpers were metal. But now it's plastic because the weight of the metal bumper is going to be three times, four times more than the plastic bumper. Now, before uh, before you used to have mirrors that were made of metal, now everything is plastic of aluminum or aluminum. I mean, very weird, uh, weak uh, uh, cast aluminum. So that is going to break. As soon as you go and hit something, it's going to completely disappear because it's cast aluminum. So the cast aluminum is just so weak uh, when it comes to impacts and things like that. So, um, and that is the reality that we're facing now because the safety, the SCR and the APA and all that is adding weight to the vehicles. Manufacturers got it. They have to maintain fuel efficiency, power, safety, uh, comfort, in functionality and durability of the vehicles all together in one vehicle. So, of course, they're going to ship up somewhere. So they have a lot of basic things and break with the wind. You're driving your truck and all of the sudden the ferry flies away because it's plastic and it's not even bolted together. It's glued because the glue is lighter. So uh, that happens a lot. But that is the reality. So uh, now let's finish this video. Probably I want to answer some questions. Then you, if you have some questions, let's see. Uh, OK, if you have any questions, you can let me know now, because we're about to finish this video in a bit. Uh, so I have uh, uh, a lot of people commenting. Thank you. Uh, I try to do this video uh, the best possible when uh, when it comes to uh, uh, di uh, explaining the difference. Probably the next video I can do is explaining the difference between Cummins and Detroit. That will be something uh, then you might, you guys might own, be interested on uh, because Cummins uh, is uh, a uh, uh, oh, uh, yeah, you're saying something right now. Let me see. I'm seeing these 16 engines. Uh, I want to jump to that. The commercial guy says, have you worked on the 15 engines before? Only one time. These 16s were, were very rare. I mean, like, uh, they still pretty gone. Uh, um, if you want to know my location here, when I get closer, see, this is my location. Uh, that's you can Google it. Uh, I am not in New Year. You are New Year's in NC is New York, New Year's or North Carolina, right? Uh, okay. Uh, anyway, probably I, I might do that. So I talk about. Uh, oh yeah, the, uh, I have many things on my. Um, yeah, this sixteen is very rare. But now the D thirteen. I mean D fifteen engines kind of it was killing the D sixteen little by little because the D sixteen was like kind of like I don't know why it was invented because it was just one liter bigger than the uh, uh, than the D fifteen and it didn't have much power. So it was like uh, the D the sixteen engine was rated for six hundred horsepower maximum. Um, but uh, it never took off because the D15 was rated, uh, some D15, not all D15s were rated to 550 horsepower. So, uh, and, and equipped with bigger differentials and 18 speed transmissions, you have a lot of power on that. So you don't need uh, a, you don't need a, a D16 uh, engine. So you need a D15 and that was all. Uh, and you have better fuel economy in the 16. And that, that's the reason why it's pretty rare to see uh, uh, the, the 16. Anyway, uh, 
Let's see, let me see what's going on here. Okay, saludos. Saludos de Lima. Uh, gallegos. Me, uh, my 14, DD15, DD13 runs. Okay, I said that before. It's just because the programming uh, it changes. Um, eh, say Darwin. Uh, say good. G Walker, do you what do you think about the 13 high uh, HP? That's a good question. Okay, uh, I don't know how good are going to be the DD 13s with high horsepower, as Detroit is uh, advertising these engines with 500 horsepower. So I have no idea how these engines are going to be, especially when. Uh, we are talking about 80, 80,000 pounds um, going uphill with a D13 engine with 500 horsepower. How that is going to be? Of course, the Volvo, Volvo engines, they use the D13 engine, and the D13 engine is a 13 liter engine, so it's kind of like a DD13, and they are already 400 uh, 450 horsepower and they're they're uh they are able to push heavy loads with no problem but i don't know about the d13 because the d13 was mostly a local engine and i know a couple of people then have full nose full sleeper cascadias with d13 and they go all over the 48 states um but um uh, uh, they, they haven't had any major problems with the D13 engines, even though they carry heavy loads. But uh, I don't know how that is going to be if you talk about 500 horsepower, because these engines are 430 maximum. This engine, that's a 2017, I know, 2017 uh, D13 engine, that's 430, 430 horsepower. Well, it is for us to see for 2025, 2026, 2027. And it looks like D13 is going to be the engine that is going to be there for us. Uh, let's see. Um, Gallegos, 1.1 million miles. I believe it. I, I know different engines that are over 1.1 million miles with original engine D15, D13s, regardless. Sometimes they don't last that long, but sometimes they do. So it varies. Uh, okay, pop tar gone trucking. Just subscribe. Thank you, thank you for subscribing to my channel. I always try to keep my content dedicated to you guys and giving you the best information uh, as possible. Um, and uh, I will continue on trying to do the same, keeping it humble, keeping it for you guys. I know that it's pretty tough now, especially with this hardship that we're facing. A situation is in the great, uh, in the greatest. I'm sorry. Um, so we need to do something about it, and by doing something about it, that means that we're helping each other to continue through this uh, hardship. And um, uh, we'll see how it's gonna go next year. It seems like this is going to be really bad anyway. This year is going to be really bad, but hopefully we can go through it, and uh, we can take next year like a champ. You know. Ah, uh, let's see. I'm a girl, but it's perfect. Uh can read it. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay, Benjamin Rodriguez. Saludos desde Texas. Saludos. ¿Cómo estamos? Uh, allá en Texas. En Davos. En veces al rato voy a, eh, a ir a Texas al rato de nuevo, quizá. No sé. A Odessa, Houston. Alguien que me invite, que me diga, que vaya allá, que me paga todo, voy para allá. <risa> bueno, tal vez algo, voy en algún otro lado, que, me, que alguien me invite de alguna manera, voy. No me gusta ir sin rumbo, tengo que ir a un rumbo. Creo que eso es algo muy, que, que, que me gusta. ¿no? Eh, gallegos, uh, my is at 500 horsepower. Yeah, it's, that's, that's a... Uh, 400 horsepower, 500 horsepower is, is, I mean, it's a pretty decent power, to be honest. Darwin, Darwin, el boss, a huevo. 
El boss. Aquí está el boss, el boss, el boss. <laughs> Uh, G. Walker, there is no way I will trust a D13 uh, 500 horsepower. I, I, I understand. I believe it. I, I would think the same way. Uh, there is no way I will trust a D13 D engine with 500 horsepower. I think it is just too much. But uh, technology is advancing very, very fast. Uh, now uh, we have talking about engines and sizes now we have uh, the new toyota tacoma thing is coming with a four cylinder engine with a turbo charge with 200 uh, and something horsepower and the old b6 was having that power so now the newer engine smaller engine is going to have but in addition to that power you have a lot of electronics and a lot of computers and a lot of components that can go wrong so that means then yes uh it's possible then uh, the engine can uh, have the uh, can 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 afford or can uh, uh, work uh, good with the a with the a a with the, with the full load with the fifty three foot trailer uh, fit trailer and uh, uh, eighty thousand pounds on the back. So, but that doesn't mean that it's going to be cheap. There is something. There is a cash somewhere. Because the D15 used to do that pretty easy with the it was a bigger engine. But let's see how that goes. Okay, uh pop tar, uh one trucking D13 can also hold a uh, 500 horsepower, probably much more like uh LS small it is a small block, yes, that's true. Chevy, but is uh capable of 1000 horsepower, 1200 horsepower plus. I will count. Uh, I will count it out. Uh, there is able to do. There is able to do a lot of in this engine like. Well, I mean, like uh, yes. Uh, 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 pump tire working. Uh, uh, gun, gun trucking. I will say, and that's true. Uh, um, the power of the engine is not about how small the engine is. The power of the engine is how well engineered this engine is and how strong the internals of the engine are. So um, if you have a small engine like an NLS engine, an LS engine is a very old engine, uh, but it's capable to push a lot of power because I have very strong internals. If you forge the internals of this LS engine, you are capable to do the 1200 uh, horsepower keeping the engine reliable because the internal of the engine are stronger than they were before so i think that is something that they might do with the d13 engine they are reinforcing the internal components of the engine that way they can't uh, uh, be able to push that much power and maintaining the integrity of the internal components when this power is requested. Hopefully that is true. Hopefully uh, I'm right. If I am not right, we're gonna find out as soon as these engines start breaking, we're gonna see why they're breaking. Uh, and uh, I'm, 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 I, I can wait to see one of my customers going to buy a 2025 DD13 engine with 470 horsepower. So I wanna see that myself. And as soon as I get that, probably I can do a live video showing you what it's like to see a D13 engine with 470 horsepower. That's DD15 horsepower. Hmm? But let's see. Let's see how it's going. Uh, okay, Baba Hero, God bless you for helping us. Thank you. Uh, I do my best, as I said before. Um, uh, pop Targon trucking. I have both engines D13, D15, uh, but the 13 was a good engine. I remember the motor, Adam motor pulling some mountains, heavy hauling rolls of papers, and never had any problems. Yes, I I believe it. I think that, uh, as I said before, I have people working on. The, uh, then have the 13 engines and they go all, all over the 48 states and they they do well with those engines. Oh. 
hopefully that is the case for the 500 horsepower D13 engine that is going to come as the new generation D13 engine. G Walker, I am sure it can produce the power. Uh, uh, the HP might thinking about the longevity and the stress on that engine to make a uh, higher HP. Yes, that's true, G Walker, and that's what I'm saying. I mean, like, uh, when you add more power to the engine, you create more stress to the internal components. But as I say, if they're reinforcing the internal of, uh, of the components of this engine, of course, they're going to be able to... Uh, uh, Precise the horsepower, the increase of horsepower, because the engine block it is the same. What breaks it is the internals, the cylinder, the piston, the connecting rod, and the connecting rod bearing, because those are the ones that are receiving the pounding, the pressure, the the beating every time the piston is going down on stroke cycle. The piston is hitting. I mean. The combustion is hitting the piston, hitting the piston pin, the uh, connecting rod, and the bearing, and then the crankshaft. So every time it's going like that. So if that is completely beefed up, it's, it's completely uh, reinforced, it's going to resist the power. Um, let's see. Pumptar uh, uh, trucking, DD15 cannot. Uh, Tell the difference. Uh, uh, the two today they seem to be strong, and I have uh, I've been to twenty of them. I only had one D thirteen, and it was good. Yes, uh, pop are uh, gone trucking. Uh, there is not much difference between these two engines, uh, D fifteen and and D uh, thirteen. If you if you open the hood of both engines, they look exactly the same. But then when you start paying the attention to every component, that's when you're gonna start noticing then one sensor is located here, the other sensor is located there, uh, the location of the fuel pump is a little more in there, the size, uh, the overall size of the engine is smaller, EGR cooler is different, and things like that. But it's a very, very a small difference than you need to have both engines. If you have no idea what engines are, you need to have both engines to see the difference. And eventually you will be able to catch up on the difference, on the difference between the two engines. Uh, okay, um, G Walker thumbs up, thank you. Um, uh, Tar, on trucking, uh, D13 is, it's good blog. It is just as good as the 6NC and the Series 6. Those caterpillars were pretty good, to be honest. Um, and the Series 60 was a good engine, too. The major problem with the Series 60 engine was uh, the cylinder liner uh, corrosion problem. Then was leaking coolant inside the concrete system. That was one of the major problems of those engines because of the O-rings were kind of crappy. The water just stuck in it. And uh, the same water, then, then the seal was preventing to go in uh, uh, outside the cylinder. It was the same water that was destroying the, the cylinder. So that was an uh, engineering defect in this case. It was, they never, ref uh, fix that problem. They went through many different series 60s uh, generation, 60 series generation, and they still have the same problem. Mm -hmm. But overall, it was a good engine. It was a pretty robust engine. It was just a basic engine, long a block engine, then have a little more torque than horsepower. So, a uh, little red garage. Hello. <laughs> Okay, G Walker, DD16, uh, I thought it was the biggest engine Detroit had. Yes, the D16 engine was the, big, the biggest engine Detroit had, but it never took off because DD15 was the popular platform. Uh, every single Cascadia 
um, had DD15. It was very rare when you found a DD16. And if it was a DD16 engine, you either want to find it on a Western Star or a Coronado. Uh, you weren't uh, finding uh, DD16 engines on a, a Cascadias. Very, if, if, if you found a DD16 engine on a Cascadia, it was pretty rare. Um, so uh, that was something, I don't know, how oh, weird sometimes because it was not much different when it comes to how big the engine was. When it comes to DD13 and DD15, it was a big difference. But when it comes to DD16 and, and, and DD15, it was not much difference. Even some components were the same from DD15 and DD16. They were not much different, so. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, you walk there. Those are pretty big shoes. But I talking about opinions. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Erwar, can I come work well, for you? I need hands on. Well, I mean, like, um, we have work, but not like, like extremely busy. Uh, but eventually, probably, I will be asking people to come over to work. If you want to know, if you want to learn, probably I can teach you some stuff. Maybe I can do that. But eventually, I will be able to do that. Not now, I suppose. Uh, okay, I have a full code here. I'm getting uh, DJ Polo. Polo? Uh, I'm getting uh, got uh, SPN 2798 13. Huh. Let's see what that full code is about 2798 two, 13. Let's see. Let me see. Uh, I I I I really like to see what are the fault codes about. That way, I know uh, more about problems to help people in general and to help myself when it comes to to uh, uh, fixing situations. But in this case, I don't see anything related to that. I don't see any type of uh, full code related to that number. I want to research more about it later and see what I can do. Hmm. Yeah, there's not much information about it. Well, I'll find out later. I'll let you know. Uh, Mr. Edward, gonna be a neighbor tech. Hmm. Yes. Uh, pop turn, uh, going trucking, very educational. Thank you, I appreciate it. My work here, I'm a girl, but I'm learning everything I can. Uh, this uh, good stuff, yeah. Well, I mean, uh, it doesn't matter who you are, I mean, like you can learn everything as long as you have the patience, especially when it comes to um. Uh, mechanical components, you have to be patient and you have to understand every single component. If you make a mistake, don't hesitate, don't... Uh, as, the first thing we do when we make a mistake is like we get crazy. We 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 have many different ideas, a lot of pressure on your brain and all that, but that's completely normal. Uh, so uh, if you make a mistake, just start over, think about it, refresh, go somewhere, relax your mind for a bit so you can have a Clear thoughts again, and uh, don't don't work with pressure because if you work with pressure, you just gonna create it. You just gonna keep on breaking things. So start over, you know, like reset yourself. So breathe in, breathe out, you know, like breathe. And eventually, you wanna start like thinking straight and knowing what else you can do to fix the situation that you are in. Uh, said true. Uh, in other words. Just don't delete your truck. Your uh, the lifting engine is a good engine. Don't expect uh, to blow any 
on the highway. Well, I mean, I can. Uh, it's up to you guys want to do. If you want to delete your system, you don't want to delete it. I mean, like, uh, what we can do? I mean, I won't stop you. I mean, like, I have no authority to stop you from doing something like that. So I might say then if you delete your system, you're still going to have problems. The problems are not going to go away if you delete your DS system. But uh, uh, are going to be different problems if you have the original system. So. But it's up to you. I mean, I, I, I think uh, we all want to choose what we're going to do, if it's good or not. I mean, it's, uh, it's up to everybody what they want to do. Um, uh, pop tar gone trucking fat. OK, yes, uh, thank you. Uh, I have pulled around 80K on uh, and done well. Yes, it happens. and. Uh, I uh, only had one deducting engine. I regret getting rid of it. Uh, I, uh, it was really good. One only problem was the AGR cooler. They bought were simple. Hey, AGR cooler on the 13 engines is a little more expensive than the DD15 because it's a whole base AGR cooler, and the DD15 is just the AGR cooler itself. So. It's a big difference on that. Uh, the year cooler on the 13 is kind of pricey. OK, pop uh, on trucking, say job. OK, pop on trucking. This is what uh, meat and potatoes. Uh, good video. Good Thank you. Profitable animals. Uh, my gas pedal is getting hard on. Uh, final Netherlands is talking hard on. I mean, like, uh, when you mean you have no acceleration or it's stuck, uh, well, I mean, that varies. I mean, there's so many things that can go wrong on, on, on accelerator pedals. But uh, D13, D15, they use kind of the same uh, uh, computers and uh, sensors. So, I mean, you need to look at it. Uh, I don't know what you're referring to, but yeah. Okay, but then uh but then we'll truck in, say change your cable. Oh okay, you're talking about that uh, gas pedal for change your cable. Yeah, I had one D rate on the month. The biggest problems with uh these two engines are one of the major five and it is all about maintenance and how well these engine with these owners are taking care of them uh, because most of them are abusing these engines that is true i mean like uh, a lot of owner operators not all because i know a lot of people they really take care of the engines and the truck in general but so many of them they do repair the engine or the truck only when the engine or the truck breaks, not before. And that is really bad uh, because you are um, having one problem here, another problem, another problem, another problem. And then when you with, with your truck breaks, you have five different problems and you need to fix and you don't have the budget to fix it. So and that is when trucking sucks because you don't have the money. So it's better to do things, you know, like the things when it is inside to do them so that way if you know that something is going bad replace it before it breaks because by the time it breaks something else is going to be broken too so it, it depends you know but you know the budget too if you have the finances and everything so sometimes it's hard uh but i'm going to work talking say yeah, great job okay this thing is going to cause you every time i see it <laughs> Um, I don't know, 66 gear. Yeah, 66 is a good engine. It doesn't have that many problems. It doesn't have nothing at all, nothing compared to these newer engines. It's just the engine, injectors, a, a computer then controls the fuel injection, and that's it. Uh, pretty basic repairs, pretty basic engines. Uh, and if you have the older 60 series engines, they're very basic. They don't have nothing at all. So they're not like these engines. Uh, parts are uh, already available for anywhere in the country. Or, uh, yes, uh, for the 15, the uh, or series 60s. Yes, uh, series 60s is like 
one of the engines and you can buy parts anywhere. Uh, that's true. I've been watching you for very long time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you for everybody that is watching my videos. Uh, I'm trying my best as I before, keeping this all together for you guys. Uh, and uh, let's see, have you worked on these things before? Uh, oh, yeah, why well, just respond to that? All right, yeah, North Carolina, okay. Um, Alonso Amador, hola, Francisco Amador Transport. Oh, see, sí, así can. <laughs> ¿Cómo estamos? Ahí andamos, eh. Me parece que no vino, ah, por el compresor de aire acondicionado o algo de aire acondicionado, ya me recordé. Eh, me ya me recordé. <risa> un problema ahí. Eh. Está bien, está bien, no hay problema. Este, I have been uh, through 20 D15s and one D D13. Yeah, because uh, before D13s weren't that common. D15s were the common ones. But it seems like on this newer generation of trucks, D13 is going to be the common one, and D16 is going to be the not very common one. So it seems like it's changing roles. Uh, G Walker, hit the like button. Yes, thank you. Thank you, G Walker. Uh, eh, Juan Marcos Lazo Castillo. Saludos desde Chicago. Hey, ¿cómo estamos? Hey, en Chicago. Rato vamos a ir a visitar allá. Chicago, Chicago, Illinois, vamos a ver qué vemos por allá, una invitación por allá para ir. Es eh, the commercial guy, I heard that changing a front crankcase seal from uh, and a front crankcase gasket is difficult to do a show notes here and yet. Yes, uh, anything, if you have uh, the commercial guy. If you if, if you have if you have a D thirteen engine with a short nose, everything is double or triple. If you have a fuel pump replacing a fuel pump on a short nose cascadia, that is that is uh, good luck with that. If you have to replace the injector number six on a front end cascadia with a short nose, also good luck with that. <laughs> you're gonna need a lot of patience. <laughs> You're gonna need it. So if you have never worked on short nose cascades, eh, that is that is painful. You you have to meditate before you start working on those. You have to think about what you really wanna do before you start doing a job because you don't wanna start that job. They are very bad, especially short nose only. Cascades M2s, very bad. But we have to do that, so it's possible. Uh, you work. Okay. What are your feelings about rebuilding a DD or versus purchasing a rebuild one? Well, I mean, I reveal a lot the D15 engines, D13s. It depends who does the job. Um, they 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 are okay after rebuilds. One thing I would say, then there was a a problem with the DD15 engines, the especially the piston rings. They usually uh, for the years 2011, 2016, especially those that, those years, uh, the piston rings were having problems on, with oil consumption. So after the rebuild, after you uh, do the repair to the engine, you put the new piston, new cylinder liner, the piston uh, rings were, uh, after like maybe eight months, nine months, one year, they were letting oil in the combustion chamber, causing oil consumption. Um, and that was a problem with that. So that, that was very bad for that generation of parts. Probably the factory that was manufacturing those parts were were bad. And now I don't I haven't seen that problem so far, but it was like a couple of years, like two, three years, then that happened in and it wasn't really bad. You know. You, you repaired the engine one year ago and you have oil consumption, that's really bad. But it happened with D15 and D13s also. So, uh, trucking, I have my own shop here in North Carolina. I'm just like, uh, why, why no? Okay, hey, that's good. You have your, uh, 
your job. I mean, being a girl, I mean, like, I think that's amazing. I mean, possible, everything is possible. But if you have the, the spirit, you have the, uh, the will, you have everything, the, uh, uh, we can say the budget to afford all that too, hey, I mean, why not? I mean, uh, business is business, and if you are capable to do it, someone else is capable to do it. We all, we all have the same, uh, a, uh, we can say, we all can do the same. But uh, we might need different motivations to do the same, but we all can do it. Um, Marcos, Juan Marcos Loza Castillo, ¿cree que un D15 llegue fácil a las 900 mil millas? Sí, hay varios D15s, hay varios este, DD15s que llegan a las 900 mil millas. Han ha habido muchos camiones que se han reparado a las 1 millón. Pero hay otros que no, que llegan a las 500, 600 por diferentes problemas. El problema común de los DD15 es uh, el aceite, como lo mencioné en el video, el aceite, los órdenes del aceite y uh, los cilindros se quiebran. Son los problemas principales por los cuales el motor se arruina antes del tiempo, pero son defectos de, que nunca se han reparado de la fábrica. Eh, no es porque el motor sea que internamente el motor se quiebre, sino que es el defecto del componente específico que hace esa falla. Si ese efecto, ese, ese defecto no existiera en estos motores, eh, si el defecto del de tubo del aceite y, y la parte baja del cilindro no existiera, estos motores duran mucho tiempo. Pero ese defecto los hace muy vulnerar, vulnerables a tener problemas. David Cruz, en español... Líder, por favor, sí, sí, claro, vamos a seguir haciendo videos en español. Y, y este video casi lo hizo en inglés, sí, sí. Pero vamos a poner la mayor cantidad de información en español también, como pueda. Eh, Pop down from trucking. This was a great video. Very good question tonight. Thank you. Um, John Galeado. Uh, hola Francisco, tengo un Volvo de 12 en agrícola. Este con otro original. Frente al 2007. Ah. Uh, ¿Ya va? Ok. No, no ratito más. Ah, también. Pues. Okay. Um, well, uh, That, that's a good engine, to be honest. Hmm. Uh, Volvo engines are pretty good. They, they last pretty long time. But uh, uh, I don't have nothing against those Volvos. They're pretty good, but they're kind of expensive. That's all. But they're pretty good. I would say that. Okay, let's finish this video because it is just, I mean, I'm taking like one hour and 38 minutes. That's, uh, I'm, I'm going to, I don't finish that. So, Hey, pop tar uh, going trucking. You are good. You 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 are you are a, you are a good uh, girl. You are you are taking things. I mean, you are making something happen. That's good. I like that. You can do everything. Uh, yeah, that's amazing. Then you, as a girl, you are capable to do many things. Continue on doing that. I mean, that's about it. I mean, if you if you have the skills. Just do it, and, uh, and one day you wanna you wanna be able to have more. Okay, uh, okay, ah, uh, hey, um, I'm 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 over now. So because I'm what five thirty eight. E, thank you for everybody. I mean, I can sorry, but I'm gonna leave. It's time to go home for me to. I didn't know I was going to take this long in this live video, but I hope you guys like it. I try my best to have the the best at the beginning of the video, so yeah, that way you guys can rewatch it and you don't have to go through the whole thing. You can just start the video and quit it anytime. Um, and um, D13 and D15 engines are engines that are very capable, and the difference are. Uh, are big, you know, between, between two, two engines, even though they look the same.
But uh, eventually, uh, you will decide on what is the best engine. And if for 2025, as I said before, these engines are going to be only D13 engines with 500 horsepower, well, that's going to have 500 horsepower D13 engines. But as it is now, we still have the D15 engines all over for 2024. 2025 is going to be different because I believe 2025 is going to be GSG24 for the new platform uh, emission system. So that's the reason why I think they're going the D13 because it's easier to control lower uh, fuel consumption, fuel efficient vehicles uh, to control the emission on a big, then a bigger engine because it still is producing more uh, pollution, even because it's a bigger engine, it, it burns more fuel. But anyway, um, let's see how it goes. I hope you guys like this video, and if you have any questions, comment below. Uh, here is the, uh, well, this is me, right here, uh, CCF service, right here. You can Google it, you can find me if you have any interest of coming. Uh, just keep on mind, and you guys gotta wait. Uh, and sometimes you have to leave your truck for a couple of days if you need any type of repair. But as it is, thank you for watching, and uh, I'm gonna have you both for the next live video, and uh, uh, let me know what are your thoughts, what are, what, what is the last, next live video you wanna see. Uh, you can comment below somewhere, you can comment below here what you want the live video to be, the next live video, so that way I can talk about that. All right, so see you later, and thank you for watching. All of you were great, and I would like to do the same for you guys, and that's the reason why I'm going to share more information so that way you guys can understand more about these trucks. Thank you, and see you for the next video. Okay, right? bye. Okay, bye. <laughs> yes, stop.